you find out. Yes, this is my turn. This is okay. So this is question. Uh, this question says, "What are some practical ways to prepare for marriage?" Mm. Practical, practical ways. ways. Our our <laughs> what ours was like just so different. Yeah, that we didn't. We can't we use can't, ours. Yeah, no. can't use ours. Um, uh, so um, because we never dated, we just no. got engaged. Basically, we were friends, and then we made a decision. Right. I'm so, so glad it worked out. It did. It really did. <laughs> I mean, it's like really good. So practical ways. Let me see. Okay. So okay, the assumptions here are that you you heterosexual and that you are um, Christians. Both of y'all it can be different practicing levels, different different um, maturity levels, uh, but that both of y'all are Christians. So. Um, people want to jump right smack dab into premarital counseling. I know a lot of saints of God <laughs> want to jump right smack dab into premarital counseling. I don't advise that. Even though we, <laughs> we used did. to do premarital counseling. And we did. Yeah, and six we did weeks six weeks at my church and, and eight, eight weeks, weeks at, at her mine church. Before. Yeah. So um, I don't recommend that off in the beginning. Are you going to explain why you don't re- recommend premarital? I will, but I got to okay. preface it. You got to go back around. Here we go. It's my preamble. All right. Um, some people want to jump really quickly into relationships and think about marriage. In, in doing that, you avoid the natural progression that a relationship evolves into and the relationship feelings and com- community that you build with each other, that community that the two of you all build with other people and the 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 way that you all interact with society, the way that you all interact with other families, mm-hmm. you you try to skip past all that and start talking about relationship and marriage too soon, um, and you you miss out on how you would naturally build together. I had a, a, a friend of mine, yeah, friendship. he had a actually, yeah, it was a, it was a client of mine. He was dating this one girl, and so they came to the uh, boot camp and loved it, loved it, loved it. About two months later, they got that's fine. It didn't work out, so he started dating this other girl. Like in two weeks, he was like, So he'll come to your boot camp and we think about doing the premarital counseling at our church. Uh, and I was nah. like, Dude, wait six months before you try to come, you go anywhere because y'all don't even know, y'all still learning each other. So don't try to hurry up and get to the point of marriage because you miss the natural mm-hmm. progressive steps that take that take place when you are in a relationship. Yeah, yeah. We, we actually did that when we got together. Um, I think after we got engaged, we started arguing more because we were trying to be a couple instead of just being our regular friendship friends. which is what we were and and that's and i was like i think we're trying to like make this thing work instead of just naturally letting our relationship develop over time uh and so i said let's just stop trying to do all these things that we think couples should be doing or should be feeling and and don't get mad at me if i don't feel what you think a man should feel in this stage of our relationship because it's going to grow and develop over time. It was weird because it's like we've been friends for years and then we decided to get married. And then in that first month, we had to like learn each other. We were yeah. trying to learn each other in a dating way, which then it was like, I want to go back to the other <laughs> yeah, way. That was fun. It was more fun the other yeah, way. Because some people try to make the relationship yeah. work instead of just be in a relationship. So, yeah, so, so yeah. that that's my, that's the preamble. Um, so the practical ways I think you all should, um, um, prepare for marriage is to start doing things that 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 build the unity between the two of you all very very strongly. Uh, um, it's, it's common play, common knowledge that when you go through a test or trial, when you go through some adversity, that brings people closer together. I'm not saying y'all got to go through adversity, but mm-hmm. I'm saying do things that will challenge the. Um, the strengths of your relationship. Like me and Bernie just recently started doing road trips again. And it's because when we first got married, uh, actually before we got married and shortly after we got married, we used to take road trips a lot. And so we found out a lot about each other on those road trips. Oh, yeah, we did a lot of talking. Yeah, Yeah. Um, and you can do the road trips. You don't have to spend a lot of money or you can go places. Um, Going on weekend getaways, which is really what we did, that helped us learn one another more. And that helped us a lot of talking. Uh, We have a tradition now where we put play a new song that we haven't heard in the car (laughs) when um, we ever we do a road trip. I don't ever remember the song. You know why? Because I'm asleep. Yes. (laughs) 
He's like, what song was this road trip? Yeah. Uh, like, we hear a Kurt Franklin song. Know. Like, oh, man, I remember that time you went down to South Carolina. I remember Carolina. the song. Did you play that in South Carolina? Yes. Sleep. Yeah, she was asleep because I do the driving. Yeah. Uh, and so that's one way. Um, and so the, no- the next way, if you if you start to think that you want to get married, you need to start hanging around married oh, folk. Oh, yeah, we did that. Hang around good, and- regular, not people who got drama, not people who are your friends, who you've been hanging around with all this time, who are single. And you, you need to hang around married folk. Yeah, and I mean, hopefully it's uh, married folk that are like-minded because you'll see yeah. good and bad. That's right. You'll see relationships that's like, oh, I don't want to be like that. And that's important too. And, right, because you'll see it both. You'll be like, oh, I like that. Or you'd be like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. You'll see it all. I think it's it's just it as important good, yeah. to see what we did not like about yes. couples mm-hmm. um, as to what we did like. Yeah. And so uh, definitely need to um, hang around a married couples. Um, and then you'll start to see how you want to fashion your life together. Because you hanging out, going over to people's house for dinner, you inviting them over to your apartment for our, our house for dinner. Um, and just you see how couples interact. Interact as a couple. And, and that will give you a different perspective than yes. what you may be already perceiving is a couple's relationship. Mm-hmm. And you'll hear stories from other couples about what marriage really is like. And then that will give you more discussion to talk about. Right. So I think that's a number number two. Number three, I think you need to get um, an accountability couple. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're talking about pre premarital counseling. Accountability couple, somebody who's married, they're doing it in a good way, same like mindedness that you respect, that you, respect, you, that you can to, submit to, and will listen to, and will listen to exactly. Mm-hmm. And um, and that person, you will, you know, the two of you all will agree that you all, if we have a problem or if we have a difficulty or conflict, then we can go to them and they can give us advice and we'll listen to them. Right. We have one and still have one to this yep. day. Yep. yep. There yep. are yep. roomies. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's up, roomies? Um, number four is to then seek out. Some spiritual marital counseling because you need to have these spiritual components um, taught to you about what they are if you don't know already. But even if you do know, you need somebody who is who is well versed with scripture, well versed with biblical principles to teach you about the biblical way of marriage. Number five, I think you should go to marriage couples weekend retreats. Um, they don't have to be spiritual. They can be uh, secular. You do that because you need to be around other couples um, who are doing similar things, have the same goals as you. Mm-hmm. Um, you also need to be um, to get different perspectives, some practical perspectives that that the biblical um, approach doesn't focus on. It's not that the biblical approach is uh, um, deficient in anything. It's just that the secular perspective has a different focus and those are real life issues that you'll deal with as well yes so it it, and and they're not long term you go on a weekend getaway or a weekend retreat or um or or some like one day seminar or stuff like that Mm -hmm. dudes really don't like going in that though for real they don't (laughs) but because you get engaged or you want to get married you can force them to go (laughs) and do that Hmm. yeah make them go because they need to know um, well, those kind of like to talk about like finances and yeah. stuff like that. That's important. Yeah, you don't want to go. See, you don't want to use the church, um, the church Lovely. counseling to talk about finances because <laughs> you know just- their focus. Their their focus is the biblical portion, and they, and they all have financial components. Yeah, and the financial components are good. But if you talk to a financial counselor, because we did with the boot camp that we did. Um, no, we were doing premarital boot camp then. We started. It when we first started the premarital boot camp. We had a financial planner come and talk to yeah, um, one of our couples, mm-hmm. and uh, they ended up working with the couple after our boot camp to get their finances straight. And everything. Yeah. So it's that kind of stuff that you need. So that's I think those five steps that you have to do to prepare for marriage.